Hey everybody, look who's here again. It's Sunflower Steve, Hi guys. who came with a just a whole bunch of amazing... An abundanza. An abundanza of fall stuff. So <laughs> this is all Steve. So Steve, I'm going to let you just take it away here to show us what you have. Okay, thanks. So the last time I was here, it seemed like there was a lot of interest in the native plants. A lot of folks hadn't seen it before. Um, I know you guys, most of your channel is more gardeners than they are cut flower people, but um, these are some of the things that we used to use out of our, our garden and stuff around the house to accentuate the fall for our farmers markets. We used to do farmers markets back in the day. And so I brought a few down. Some of this is gonna be homework for you. You might have to do some things and later post what you did with okay. them. But I just wanted to show you some of the things that we use in the fall to extend our season, as well as what I used to sell to some of my wholesalers uh, on, on the end of the year too, to make a little extra money. So some of these are natural. A couple of people are gonna freak out about some of the hydrangea things I did, but it's all kind of, it's all in fun. So. The first thing I'm going to show you is the grasses. Now I've got three of the main prairie grasses, little blue stem, big blue stem, and Indian grass. The first one I'm going to show you is big blue stem. Some people call it turkey foot because it's got the seeds that kind of look like a turkey's foot. Okay. All right. So what we would do, and I'll show you each one of these. Um, you can go on and Google John Deere. Okay. 870. Okay. 780. 780. <laughs> 780 swather. Okay. It kind of works like a combine where it has big paddles up front that pull the grass in. Okay. Sickle bar that cuts them. Yep. They fall in towards the machine. Two belts bring them to the center and lays them out right behind the machine. Oh, cool. So then we would go along and grab them. Yep. And the kids would, would take them, bunch them up. They take a zip tie, put it around there, like that. The way they used to shock wheat years ago. Right. Do that. And then you can take a hand snippers if you want. But one of these floral tools. Yeah, one of these floral choppers. You chop it on the bottom. I get to get a broom up, clean this up before I leave. So and once we do that, then you take it and you spin it a little bit. Oh, that's the secret. Yeah. And you set is that I don't know if that's even a good frame. So you set it down. And yeah. if you have a pot, put some sort of stake or something in the right. middle to go through the middle right. and hold it up. This is my favorite grass. This is the Indian grass. Um, if any of you are painters, it looks like a sable paintbrush. And the cool thing about all the prairie grasses is at sunrise and sunset, the whole field looks like it's glowing. I have oh, four yeah. acres of this, and there's silica in the seed heads. Oh, so, so when it the sun, Yeah, it just it, it diffuses the light, and the whole field yes. looks like it's glowing. But the same thing, you take this, whoops, put a zip tie on it. We used to do this with hand sickles until for about oh two gosh. or three years because we weren't doing that many. We were only doing 50 or so. Yeah. And then one of my big customers wanted 800 of them. Yeah. So I went online and found this old yeah. 1960 whatever swather and we did it with that. We spin it. I love this trick with the spinning because I have seen grasses before and I'm always like, how do you get this nice yeah, face shape? Like that. What a good tip. Like I say, then you put it in a pot. Yeah. And then you can accentuate it. I'll show you in a little bit some things you can accentuate it with the okay. fall one. And then some of these fall ones you can carry over in the winter. So there's the That's beautiful. Indian grass. Also, the key on all these is right after they get done pollinating, you see the pollen falling off, once they close back up, that's when you cut them. Okay. If you wait till they get too dry, you can do that in about two days, all the seeds will fall off. Oh, okay. But if they're still green, okay. cut them, put them somewhere cool and dry yep. for about four or five days, let them dry down okay. without getting super dehydrated. Okay. And then they'll hold the seed along. A little blue stem grass. <clears throat> Excuse me, same thing. Once the grass goes from the bluish green, mm -hmm. it turns this purple color. Yep. You know, like the gophers. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, maroon, yeah. Like the yeah I'm familiar okay. with the Minnesota Gophers. All right. Um, so the same thing. You take that and you cut it before. You can see how it's getting a little fluffy now, yep. getting a little silver. That's where the seeds are going to be. Okay. If you wait till they fluff up, same thing. It's going to, within a week, all the seeds will be gone. Yeah, okay. But in about a week from now, this will be all fluffy. We've had one on our, on our uh, mantle of yeah. our fireplace for like five years. Now. Yeah. And these are great for little pots, you know, by the house yeah. or whatever. Same right. thing. Spin it open. Now, once it gets the seed heads on there. Right. It looks fantastic. Right. It's just a great fall yeah. uh, decoration. So that's the little blue stem. We used to make Christmas wreaths okay. at, our, at our farmer's market. Yep. Um, we did some some of the fall things too. I found there's a couple things you can use that work good in the fall and you can repurpose them for the winter. Oh good, that's one great. Of, one of them is the sumac. Yep. No, it's not poison sumac. A lot of people think sumac, they think poison sumac. Sumac actually is native to North America. Mm -hmm. And this is the kind I always used to use it's kind of a fluffier you know right almost yep. velvety looking yep and then one day i was on the way home driving down the coulee and i saw this one yeah it has more like these little bb's right on it. right and so i actually dug one out in the fall planted in my place and i have a whole hedgerow yeah. so we would use these in the uh 
uh, Christmas trees. Mm -hmm. But then we started mixing them with the grasses uh, for the fall things. They go great in the pots, stick them in like that. And then when it comes time to put your winter ones in, take all the grasses and things out, put in your Norway pine, your birch and all that, and you've got the red in there with the green. What a great idea. So, so you got the sumac, another great one. And now this is gonna be homework for Erin too. She's gonna have to put something together after I leave. So this, <laughs> these are actually limelight hydrangeas, okay? I know some people might think it's a little gaudy, but you're not going to have this be the focal part of your fall right, thing. Right. You put some of the grasses and some other fall things, and you tuck a couple of these in there yep. to just have a little bit of pop underneath. I took these, I cut them, let them dehydrate for about eight hours in the shade in my barn, Okay. and then I put them floral dye. Okay. Absorbent floral dye. It's A, B, S, O, R, B. Yeah, absorb it. A, B, S, O, R, B hyphen I, T, absorbent flower dye. Just put it in there for about an hour, colors them up, take them out, let them dry down, and same thing, you can use this in the winter too for a winter arrangement. Now, with the floral dye, is this something where you buy the color you want these to turn? Right. Unlike the sunflowers, because you had told me like you had to do different colors of dye. For yeah, the no, these right? turn pretty so much these, whatever so, color. Okay, great, so you just buy whatever color you want your head Yeah, and they've got, you know, neon green, they've got, but, you know, they've got yep, maroon, right, purple. Right. A purple might look good, because it, right. it would dry down darker. These mm -hmm. will get a little darker, um, but instead of putting something faux or fake in, yeah. These are, you know, you, you can throw it away, yeah, right. you can compost it versus right. something plastic no, you might I put in a different color. Idea. I know this is a little crazy orange and all that, but it's Halloween type stuff. People like No, you know, crazy we looking. need a little color in our right. in our fall arrangements for sure. And like you said, you don't have to keep it in there forever. No. You know, and I, again, it's not some yeah. people's cup of tea, but like I said in the last video, flowers are so subjective. Yeah. You know, this might somebody might go, that's the best thing in the other world. The other person would say, what an idiot. Why do you change the color of that? Right. Right. So now, will this? La I mean, can you put this in an outdoor arrangement? Will this? Or, yeah, no, that's, a, that's what it's so for. So it'd be just fine outside. That's okay, what it's good. for. Actually, I pulled them a little early. If you leave them in water for seven or eight days, and yeah. they slowly start to yep. die in the vase. They they went not quite so floppy. Okay. They get okay. a little stiffer. Okay. But the color remains. Yeah, great. So yeah, these are great uh, indoor outdoor. Wonderful. You know, once they're dry, but they're okay. a crunchy. This is American bittersweet. It's a vine. It's slash, slastrous, I don't remember the second half, but it's slastrous. It's American bittersweet. Um, you have to be careful. There are people that still sell the Chinese bittersweet. Yes, and so which, we should talk a little bit about right, that because, because that's, that's, an, that's an invasive. And mm -hmm. by my house, there's coolies that have been so covered in it, they've killed all the trees. Yes, we have some down the end of the road that the same oh, really? thing is happening on. Yep. And the only way to kill that is you actually have to find the vine, cut it off at the source, and then paint the, the stem with some sort of herbicide. Yep. You, if you spray, you're going to kill everything. Yep. So this is the, the native one. Yep, okay. And this one is even cooler because you used to need a male and a female. Yeah. Okay, but there's a one now called Autumn Revolution. Okay. I think it was developed by Bailey Nurseries in Minnesota. The male and female parts are on the same plant. So you only, you only need one to get the berries. Great. So and if you look at this, this has got the orange hull. Yep. With the like reddish orange berry. Yeah. The and they're big. The berries yeah, are big. big too. The non-native one is more of a yellowy mm -hmm. hull. Okay. with a reddish orange uh smaller berry in it okay. yeah these are much bigger than the, the yeah. non-natives but these pretty much self-explanatory that's pretty much october right there yeah um, i cut these four days ago i actually think if you can keep the birds from grabbing the berries yep um beautiful in for winter too i've used bittersweet before in like holiday arrangements my too. wife puts one up over our big picture window oh, up here and she gorgeous. she waits till this time of year yeah. and puts up a new one that's how yeah. long they last yeah again they get they still look pretty fresh, but there's usually so much dust on them. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's easier to take them down and replace them than it is to dust them. Right. So, again, Celastrus, it's it's fantastic. I sell it by the stem, I sell it by weight, and I sell it by the bunch, depending on the customer. And how are you growing this? Because obviously it's a vine. So right. So, do you give it a structure to vine up, or are you just letting it ramble, well, or what do you do? I've got about three quarters of a mile of deer fence up. Okay. And rather than build a trellising system, which some places do, right. I just planted it right next to the deer fence. And Good I, idea. I climbed up there once it got to the top, it kept going over the top of okay. it. But yes, you need some sort of trellising system yep. to, to grow it on. Yep. I know there's a big place in south, uh, east, western Wisconsin that grows the Chinese stuff, okay. but he can ship it to Texas where it's not even. Sure, right. Um, right. And he's got like a whole great vineyard type trellising yeah. system. So again, that, I just wanted to show you, I know the last video we did, there's lots of people that really like the natives have yeah, never heard it. of them yep. before. Mm -hmm. Um, again, this isn't yeah. gardening, although, right. although you could put an arbor full of that Absolutely. stuff. Absolutely, um, it's beautiful. There's one in Red Wing, Minnesota, by where I live, where it's a big rose thing, and then the uh, summer, it's all green with the foliage from the Celastras. Yeah. And then once fall hits, it all falls off, and there's two churches about a half block away from there, 
every weekend there's somebody getting their pictures taken under yeah. all the orange. No, it's, it's just beautiful. So, and even the grass is just yeah. a, a clump grass if you've got some here. Mm -hmm. So, yep. again, I just thought people would be interested in some of the, the natives, what they can use them for other than just garden. Well, I love this because I just, you guys, I just did a video not too long ago, you can check on the channel where I admitted that I do not like mums for a lot of reasons. But I love this because this is fall decor, fall garden decor and fall container ideas that are native. And you don't have to, you know, in a lot of cases, you might be able to go out to your garden and get some of this yeah. or forage for this. So you yeah. don't have to worry about you know, going and buying a mum that's gonna die in two weeks. Right. And there was something else you just posted uh, a little bit ago. What was it? What was it a prairie plant you posted that you really, really like this year? Oh, the gentian, yeah. Right. Oh, yeah, I so just you, posted so that on Instagram. I was talking about gentian. On so you've got a blue gentian, yeah. right? Is now, that the white one? This is a cream gentian. Gentian alba. Oh, my gosh. So, you guys, first of all, thank you You're so welcome. much. You guys, What? how generous. I have to tell you that I posted um, about my blue gentians uh, on Instagram the other day. And uh, somebody wrote to me and said, if you think that's good, you have to get the white one. Yep. And so I started looking for the white one, and here we go. It and, came. And we, oh my gosh! And thank we you. use it. We used to harvest the seed and sell yeah. the seed. Yeah. Um, but honestly, we made more money on it using it as an accent in late August or September for weddings. Yeah. Oh it's sure. A, it's a beautiful little cream color, and it's really unique. Uh, a little different than the blue. You'll get sometimes you get stacks of flowers, 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 flowers and leaves oh, and flowers. Neat. So you get three of them stacked. That's fabulous. So yeah, so I, th I saw the blue one and thought you might want to create Oh, one. that's great. Thank you so much. You're How, welcome. That's so kind of you. Oh, I can't wait to we'll plant that and we will we'll revisit this next year. All right, so Steve, we need to check in on the sunflowers. So tell us a little bit about how your sunflowers are doing and what's happening with in sunflower world. Sure. Great. Thank you. Um, I'm on Instagram now. I was kind of pushed down to it. It's been a really, really good experience actually so far. Um, and you have a bunch of followers. I, you have like 6,000, 7,000 followers it's, like that? It's nuts. Yeah, yeah. it's great. It's been Again there too, if you're following me and I haven't got back to you, I'm sorry. I just don't Steve have Steve promises to get back to everybody no. this winter. <laughs> He's going to reply to every question you sent him this winter. And if you find Aaron's body washed up on shore, yeah. it's because she just said that. <laughs> no, that uh, we have everything harvested. Okay. Um, it's in. It's going to take probably a couple hundred hours just to thrash everything down and clean it to see yep. where I'm at. Okay. Uh, that storm I did have that wiped out the rest of my cup flower production did do a major, major damage to my biggest okay. uh, mix field. Okay. Which I, I don't know how how many we're going to yeah. get out of that. That that may be a setback to me. Yeah. And I actually saw Aaron just had a big storm out in Washington yeah. too. So yep. um, I don't know where I'm at on it. So if you want to sign up for my newsletter, um, I'm hoping to put something out in November. By the time that rolls around, I should have all the seed clean and weighed out and see what we're going to need for bread stock see what Aaron has to see if I'll be able to release it this year. Okay. I may be able to do a partial release. I don't know. Again, I told you before, this is my first rodeo. I've yeah. never grown for seed before. Yeah. And I learned a lot of things. It was way more time consuming than I thought it'd be. Yeah. To go through every field every day to cut down what doesn't belong, flag stuff that I want to keep, bag stuff, hand pollinate. Uh, and then harvesting took a little longer than I thought it would too. Yeah. And I found out we need to harvest a little earlier next year because the birds on oh. one field had a heyday. Yeah. I could not believe one day everything was fine the next day hundreds and hundreds of birds out there having a buffet and oh. you'd scare them away and they come right back that's an expensive that's oh, an expensive buffet. it was i literally had to keep one kid behind to keep scaring them when we were taking them to go put it in the greenhouse yeah and at, after the third day the birds are like there's nothing to be afraid of them they're eating 10 feet from you i'm like get away from there so so it, it went better than i thought in some ways and worse than i thought in others so yeah. it's going to be a yin yang trying to figure out where i'm at at the end of the year Okay. So, but for the most part, it went really good. Good. Thank you for good. asking. Yeah, absolutely. All right. So, you guys, if you want to be the first to know, what you got to do is I will put a link in the description to Steve's email list. And once he's finished with his season, he'll start sending out emails. No, I'm kidding. He won't send out a ton of emails, I'm sure. But he will have, you will send up the list. So, when he shares the information, when you know more, you'll Right. I'll, I'll just do a mass push out on how we're doing on good. it and stuff. And good. Because I don't even know the legal stuff on shipping to different countries, right. how much I can ship from state to state, right. taxes, all that. Again, this right. is a whole new thing for me. Yeah. Um, but hopefully I'll get most of that figured out by November. Good. All right. right. Good. Thank you for coming, Steve. It's thank so you. nice. It's so nice when Steve drops in. It's nice to uh, make videos with other people. So thank you for coming. You're Thanks welcome. for bringing all this beautiful stuff. And making stuff. the big mess in your porch. And for making the big mess. I like that, Where's too. Where's the broom? We don't need a broom. <laughs> we have we have blowers for these things. That's this true. is no problem. Where's the leaf blower? This is no problem. All right, thanks for coming, Steve. You're and welcome. you guys make sure Steve will, Steve has promised to answer every single comment. <laughs> Anyways, if you have a thank comment. You. If you have she a is the nicest, sweetest. She's <laughs> nicer on off camera than she is on camera. 
<laughs> if you have a comment or a question for Steve, he might get back to you. Maybe if you leave a comment. In the On this video, I'll try to get every one of them. There we go. And if I don't know, I'll refer you to Aaron. There we go. Okay. Thanks for Bye, watching, guys. everybody. See ya. See ya. Again, so you got that the two different cool. kinds. You got the fuzzy ones here. Yep. And the ones with the, the little balls on. Oh. Yep. <laughs> Can you edit that? No, that's don't, staying in. Don't put that no, thing. No, don't Steve, put... no, Steve, that's staying in. You can't.